Just before the video starts, some pretty huge news that I just quickly want to talk about with you guys. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that the hunt has been going on since the 2nd of February and the Borderlands community. This is a charity event which is basically one gigantic treasure hunt competition where you also have the overarching goal of raising money for charity. This is all in the name of the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and over the years the Borderlands community has raised tons and tons of money for this charity. But I quickly wanted to talk about this at the start of today's video because the Borderlands community has just raised over $65,000 before the end of the hunt for St. Jude's. This makes it an official record and the most money the community has ever individually raised for this charity. So I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody involved and more specifically K6, Jolts and Bad Karma who I believe were the main organizers and also Pilot who handles the logo and stuff like that. And I'm not sure who does the website but genuinely just overall congratulations and thank you to everybody involved for trying to make a difference. And with that being said let's get into today's video. So I'm currently working on a mod for Borderlands 3 which completely rescales the game to not have such awful scaling. Now as part of this I have to go through and audit every weapon to see what needs balancing out. And as part of this process I inevitably come across items in the game which I just think are a little bit pointless. But I wanted to make a video on this one specifically today because I think it's going to ruffle some feathers and I think the discussion will be healthy for everybody involved because it's surrounding a topic which a lot of us have fallen in love with over the years. Nostalgia. Who doesn't love nostalgia? I know that I certainly do. I know that I want pearls back in Borderlands 4 just to bring back that nostalgic, crisp, hit and feeling, that serotonin shot when you get one to drop. That's what I want. I want that back. I want that dopamine rush. And we all want Vermivorous back in Borderlands 3 specifically because we love nostalgia. And that's fine. I feel like a lot of people usually make nostalgia out to be this evil thing that's ruining games and preventing series from moving forward, and I just don't agree. I don't think a few nostalgia acts in a game is what's going to hold it back and stop it from hitting all 10s across the board. I don't think many games hit all 10s across the board as is. In fact, I'd go as far as arguing that nostalgia does a really good job at bringing back old players who can then reminisce about the good old days with the new players. This, however, of course, can scale out of control and they might end up bashing the new game to the new player, which could have a ripple effect. But we're getting off topic here. While I was working on my mod and rescaling everything in the game, I was talking to another streamer who is extremely knowledgeable in the Borderlands community, Quag. Quag knows a ton about Borderlands 3 and I would wager it's probably up there in the top three most knowledgeable players of all time in the community. So of course, having this weapon of mass destruction by my side, go and check him out on Twitch by the way, I was able to pick his brains on what he thought of an item which I think had no place being in Borderlands 3, and that is none other than the iconic Unkempt Herald. This item came back during DLC 3, and I remember playing DLC 3 working on my review for it, and I found out about the Unkempt Herald not by natural terms, but by the leaks that were going around Twitter at the time. And I was really disappointed because it ruined the surprise for me. But I mean I really don't think the surprise would have been that great anyway because when I picked it up I just thought, why? You know, like of all things to bring back and out of all the things they had already brought back and butchered the design of in Borderlands 3, looking at you conference call, I really didn't understand why the Unkempt Harold had to come back, especially during a DLC which was focused around the Jacobs Corporation. I just didn't understand it. But on the flip side of the coin, it's the Unkempt Harold. Now I remember back in the days of Borderlands 2, lusciously, lovingly, farming a DPR for my endgame sow and having a great time. Wait, what's that? They didn't bring it back? Alright, alright, well, at least, at least, this is a faithful recreation of the gun in other terms. I mean, surely, surely, they nailed the projectiles. I mean, how can you do the Unkempt Herald and not bring back those signature, iconic, timed projectiles that flow out like the wings of an eagle? Uh, oh, oh my god, oh my god, what is that? But more importantly, this thing just sucked. I mean, really, I remember picking it up for the first time when I got it from the Ruiner, and man, it just sucked real bad. So this was a problem because not only did this gun come back in a state which really wasn't all that great, 
And honestly, it doesn't look that great either. But to top it off, the thing just did like no damage. And then in 2021, Gearbox finally got their senses about them or lost all of their senses about them and decided that they were going to super buff pretty much everything in the game. And thus, the Unkempt Herald gets a 100% weapon buff. For those of you who don't look like McLovin, this basically means they took the damage of the gun and they doubled it. And all of a sudden, this gun, for whatever reason, power crept basically every other pistol in the game that didn't end with Aggie. But am I alone in this? Well, I wasn't sure. So that's why I asked Quag for his take on the Unkempt Herald on stream. And if you don't believe my uneducated opinion on the power of this gun, well, here's what Quag had to say. No, Herald's on the same tier as Free Radical, like straight up. Like really? it is that level. Yeah. Because it can roll every element. So you get a corrosive Herald, like <laughs> any armored boss, you say hi, it's dead. Yeah, because I put it on on my Moe's build with my critical, and they can both kill bosses lightning quick. But the whole reason I was using the prompt critical was I was using it on sticky mode. But you see what I'm saying here, chat? If they can both kill bosses lightning quick, there's, a, there's an outlier here. The stickies take longer to get that damage than an impact mode is going to. Right? Yeah, and, and stickies you have to actually like hit the enemy. <laughs> right. And as such, my opinion has been validated. This gun absolutely sucks and I never want to see it again. But on a real note though, I don't understand why this gun exists in Borderlands 3. They brought it back from Borderlands 2. It doesn't look anywhere near the same as the Borderlands 2 one, although I'll give the designers credit, they tried. The gun functionally isn't really the same as the Borderlands 2 one at all. And on top of that, the gun was so bad at launch that they had to then buff it in the future, essentially power creeping every other item in the game. You, you know what, that makes sense. So this is where I want to ask you guys this question. When is it acceptable to bring back old items? And if you bring them back, should you expand upon them and change them like we saw Gearbox do with the Sandhawk? Or should you basically leave them as they were not really caring about making them too faithful to the original, but also not caring about straying away from the source material either. And most importantly, what I want to ask you guys is this question. If you bring something back from a previous game, should it power creep everything else in the game? Or should it be relatively in line of power with everything else? I have a feeling there's going to be a few armchair game devs who are going to be like, Gearbox should not nerf anything, they should buff literally everything epic. Why do you care if something is so powerful? And honestly, I think I've got like a three page document written up on why that's a bad take at this point, but don't take it from me. I only wrote the Redux mod. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'm sure there's a bunch of other items like this in Borderlands 3, so let me know if you want to see me cover them in the future and we'll take a look at them. There has got to be other weapons in this game that other people are just raging about that I don't know about and uh, maybe we'll talk about them. So let me know what you think and leave some suggestions in the comment section down below. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll check you all in the next one.